All right. Today is Thursday, November 18th. This is a recap for the stock market activities today. Folks, I got a good one for you tonight. And here it is in focus. Let's talk about market manipulation because it's happening pretty much every single day now via the options market. We're also going to talk about the nomination of Omarova and the explosive exchanges from today's hearing. And then if we have time, we're going to cover earnings. We got a lot of earnings and some of them are really interesting, specifically Alibaba. Very suspicious, not by inflating the numbers, but perhaps deflating them. Yep. But we start with the state of the stock market, which always been, always, a casino. But now it is evolving into a jungle with no regulations at all, predators running loose. And of course, the prey is always you and I, the retail dummies. But what's going on in the market right now, crimes happening every single day, manipulation happening every single day. And that could not be more evident than the performance of the market. While the indices, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, the SPY, the Qs are trading in the green, Pretty much every day is an upside day, but the breadth of the market, the advanced to decline ratios of the market are absolutely awful. We're seeing stocks crashing as we speak right now, but somehow the market continues to trade in the green. The reason is the ETFization of the market. You only need a handful of stocks to trade in the green aggressively for the entire index to close positively. Take for instance the advanced to decline ratios from yesterday on top. The NYSE had only 28% of the volume advancing versus 70% declining. The NASDAQ had 27% of the volume advancing versus 69% declining volume. But magically, the NASDAQ either closes flat or in the green. And today, the advance to decline ratios got worse. For example, the NYSE, 32% advancing versus 65% declining. The NASDAQ, 26% advancing versus 71% declining. Yet the NASDAQ gained about 1% today. The triple Qs, at least. How is that possible? The answer is, a handful of names managed to outperform via market manipulation using options. For example, here is Amazon, one of these names, behind the rally in the NASDAQ today, even though we have horrific breadth underneath the market. Matter of fact, Amazon rallied over 4% today, creating about over $70 billion in value. Once again, in a single day, Amazon created $70 billion plus in market cap. Why? What was the news? Do we get something new here about Amazon, perhaps an EV from Amazon or a metaverse from Amazon? Of course not. What we got is this. Starbucks and Amazon go collaborate for the launch of a New York City store. And the store allows customers to order ahead and bypass cash registers using Amazon's Just Walk Out technology. So one store is worth $70 billion. This is at least according to your beloved media. When asked why Amazon stock popped Thursday, meaning today, they're attributing the rise of Amazon stock to the store in New York City, the Starbucks store. Really? $70 billion in value was created due to a store, a potential store, by the way, in New York City, a Starbucks store worth $70 billion. Well, if that was true, then how come Starbucks stock traded in the red for the majority of the day? Is that really the reason behind the rally in Amazon shares today? Or is there another sinister reason behind what happened today? And here it is, the options market. And these are the options, the call options for the expiration date of Friday meaning tomorrow. And this screenshot was taken before the market closure, by the way. But take a look at the 3,700 calls for the expiration date tomorrow. Over 80,000 of these contracts traded today with extremely low open interest. What does that mean? They're opening these contracts closing them within the same day and the purpose of doing so repeatedly by the way and i'm thinking perhaps an automated process by doing so they're forcing the market maker to buy shares of amazon pushing the stock higher as a result also known as a gamma squeeze now these contracts are expensive they cost over a thousand bucks a piece so don't tell me that these are retail traders that these are just kids on Wall Street bets. These are professional criminals manipulating the market higher. And the purpose is to keep the indices holding, at least for now. There is something that they want to achieve and they have a time limit. Could it be Jerome Powell and his allies manipulating the market higher to secure 
his nomination again? Or could this be other criminals manipulating the market for other reasons? Absent of this manipulation, of pushing certain mega cap stocks higher every day via options manipulation, the indices would have been trading down significantly. This is done by design, folks. Because if they were really interested in buying Amazon or there is a positive catalyst upcoming for Amazon, you would have seen the contracts for next month also trading with heavy volume. But here are the options for the monthly expiration of December. Nothing. Crickets. No volume traded at all. And no carried open interest. Meaning there is no interest from these players pushing these stocks higher. There's no interest in holding these stocks. They're looking for manipulation in the short term to score big, a thousand percent gains in a single day, keeping these indices higher and intact. Even though the internals of the market are extremely awful, we have stocks crashing pretty much every single day and the indices should be trading down dramatically. However, if you are able to manipulate certain mega cap stocks higher every single day and you rotate from Tesla to Apple, to Amazon, to Meta, to Microsoft, if you can do that repeatedly, then you're gonna keep the indices intact and possibly even trading in the green. The pump in Amazon in the morning was not enough. A matter of fact, the Nasdaq was trading down. So here comes another tactic, and another strategy. So midday, Bloomberg came out with a piece that the iMob, Apple, will produce the EV, the iCar, by 2025. Of course, Apple did not comment on this story, by the way. And if you remember, this is recycling of old news. Why now? Why today? Because immediately after the story came out, the stock of Apple shot up higher. When you have Amazon trading higher by about 4%, and Apple trading higher, above 3% today, that will be enough to keep the NASDAQ trading in the green. Matter of fact, it will be enough to keep the SPY, the S&P 500, also trading in the green. And if you recall, this is old news. Matter of fact, from last year, last year we got the news from Reuters that Apple is targeting car production by 2024. Battery technology, chips, the iCar coming by 2024. So really, the news of the iCar coming by 2025 now is popping the stock higher or was that done by design to excite certain algos to buy the stock and to buy upside calls out of the money to push the stock higher and as a result pushing the entire market higher even though the internals of the market suggest that the indices should be crashing right now this is nothing short of a plunge protection team manipulating the market via options and mind you this is bloomberg an organization that is notoriously known for fake news. Matter of fact, they got fined millions of dollars for producing fake news and manipulating stocks up or down. This is the same organization, by the way, that produced the story of Hertz buying thousands of Teslas, which we now know is fake news, and Hertz never ordered any Teslas. Tesla confirmed that there is no order from Hertz. Matter of fact, Elon Musk himself confirmed that Tesla cannot accommodate an order so large at this point. So why did Bloomberg publish this story today? The answer is... To manipulate the market higher. There is a strong, powerful entity here that wants the stock market to stay higher and they have a time limit. They're running out of time. And of course, today, Senator Warren came out and said, you know what? We need the SEC to investigate DWAC, the SPAC for Trump, the Trump SPAC, the social media SPAC. And I say, you know what, Senator? If you want to investigate DWAC, if you want to investigate market manipulation, start with the entire market because everything is being manipulated right now. The entire market is being manipulated right now by criminals. And where is the SEC, you might ask? The SEC remains in a coma. Now, let's move on to the next story, and it ties up with the first story because it involves Senator Warren. And I have to clarify something here because this segment will be controversial. And the reason is it involves Omarova, the Biden's candidate to become the next controller of currency. Now in this channel, often I get accused of being either a conservative MAGA guy or a Marxist, which is absolutely hilarious by the way. And it's also a proof that I'm doing something right. But here's my take on Omarova. I'm not a fan of her aggressive approach to policies. And the reason is this country by design is subject to corporations' powers, meaning we know about the evils of Big Pharma and Pfizer, for example. But if we are to crack down against Pfizer and other Big Pharma firms, then this has ripple effects across the economy, and it could damage the economy entirely. Because who's going to pay for all advertising? We know it's Big Pharma. You crack down against Big Pharma, they're not going to spend on advertising, and this will hurt other firms. Likewise, if we're going to crack against banks, 
We know banks are evil, but if we're going to crack down against banks, then who's going to do the lending in the economy? The lending process will diminish, and therefore this will slow down the economy. You crack down against banks, there are ripple effects, and a lot of them are negative throughout the economy. So you have to be rational and reasonable in your regulatory approach. So I'm not a fan, once again, not a fan of Omarova. However, the attacks against her recently have been disgusting. And today, it just reached another limit. Absolutely disgusting and personal. Take a look. I don't mean any disrespect. I, I don't know whether to call you professor or comrade. Oh my goodness. Senator, I'm not a communist. I do not subscribe to that ideology. I could not choose where I was born. I did not, I do not remember joining any Facebook group that subscribes to that ideology. I would never knowingly join any such group. There is no record of me ever actually participating in any Marxist or communist discussions of any kind. My family suffered under the communist regime. I grew up without knowing half of my family. My grandmother herself escaped death twice under the Stalin regime. This is what seared in my mind. That's who I am. I remember that history. I came to this country. I'm proud to be an American. And this is why I'm here today, Senator. I'm here today because I'm ready for public service. So here, Omarova is being accused of being a comrade. Omarova responded and said, you know what? I'm not a comrade. My family actually suffered under communism. But that didn't matter. The attacks are now becoming personal that she's a Marxist. If you went to a school in the Soviet Union, of course you went to a Marxist school. Every school is Marxist. But listen to what Senator Warren said right after that. Professor Omarova, I know that the giant banks object to your willingness to enforce the law to keep our system safe and that you may cut into big bank profits. So they and their Republican buddies have declared war on you. The attacks on your nomination have been vicious and personal. We've just seen them. Sexism, racism, pages straight out of Joe McCarthy's 1950s Red Scare tactics. It is all there on full display. Welcome to Washington in 2021. Now, here's the problem. While Warren accusing the other senator of McCarthyism, which party has been beating the drum? Russia, 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 Russia for the last few years. It is your party, Senator Warren, that has been doing the McCarthyism. It's rampant now, it's normal, both parties are doing the McCarthyism. And these attacks against Omarova, you're attacking somebody based on their place of origin and the place they emigrated from. How about attack her on her own policies? Professor Omarova, this policy will be disastrous for the US economy because A, B, and C. But these personal attacks are disgusting. And I know what you're going to say. Why are you supporting the Marxist bro? What about capitalism? Capitalism is the best. Really? Is what's happening right now in this economy capitalism or is it gangsterism? Because if what's going on in this economy right now and with corporate America is capitalism, then to hell with capitalism. If robbing the taxpayer for 500 bucks a pop for Pfizer's pill or 700 bucks a pop for Merck's pill, if that's capitalism, then to hell with capitalism. If printing trillions of dollars out of thin air to prop up the stock market and make the rich richer and prop up the real estate market to make housing, the American dream, unaffordable for the majority of Americans, if that's capitalism, then to hell with capitalism. And when we talk about banks, by the way, if you call this capitalism, then something is severely wrong with you. For instance, listen to some of these headlines I'm about to read for you regarding the largest bank in the United States of America, J.P. Morgan. And you tell me if this is capitalism or something else. J.P. Morgan to pay $920 million for manipulating precious metals treasury market. France fines U.S. J.P. Morgan Bank $29.6 million in tax fraud settlement. Here's another one. Ex-JP Morgan Chase broker charged with stealing $20 million from clients. FINRA bars two ex-JP Morgan brokers for theft from elderly widow. Another one. Chase Bank employees accused of stealing $400,000 from elderly and dead customers. Here's another headline. At 93, she waged a war on J.P. Morgan and her own grandsons because J.P. Morgan defrauded this elderly woman in her 90s out of millions of dollars. Here's another headline. The FinCEN Files, the FinCEN Revelations. Global banks, including J.P. Morgan, defy U.S. crackdowns by serving oligarchs 
criminals and terrorists. They've been washing money for criminals for years. Matter of fact, we call JP Morgan the Landromat. Here's another headline. JP Morgan faces oil bribery probe in Brazil. Another one. JP Morgan staff said a 1.1 billion deal might be corrupt. The bank sent the money anyways, and this is for a deal in Nigeria. JP Morgan finds more than 500 workers got U.S. virus relief funds. JP Morgan employees defrauded the PPP loan program. JP Morgan investigates allegations of fraud tied to Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP loans program intended for small businesses. Former JP Morgan executives says bank fired her for raising compliance concerns. And of course, JP Morgan says, giving people with criminal backgrounds a second chance. No, it's not a second chance. You need these criminals because you are a criminal organization. And you tell me, is this capitalism? No, it's not. At least not to my definition. What we have right now is an extremist form of capitalism. And extremism on one side breeds extremism on the other side. So Omarova, if she gets nominated, she is a byproduct of the corruption and the extremism on the capitalist side. The banks deserve Omarova. They've been running loose for years. What do you think would happen? After all of these years of corruption, of printing money out of thin air, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, propping up stocks and real estate values to make the rich richer, while we have homeless people all over the place, we have big pharma companies robbing the taxpayer right now, we have banks manipulating the market and robbing people. What do you think will happen? It will breed extremism on the other side. And Omarova, that's just the beginning. Wait till the Gen Zers, when they realize finally, when the stock market crashes and the crypto market crashes, and they realize that this is not a video game, and they're absolutely screwed, unless you have mommy and daddy writing some inheritance for you, you're absolutely screwed. You're not going to have a bull market again, perhaps in your lifetime. You're probably not going to be able to afford a house, getting married, having a child, sending them to school. That's not going to happen for Gen Zers. They're absolutely screwed, because the so-called capitalist class, the 1%, the old f in their 80s and 90s, the billionaires who want more and more and more. They robbed the Gen Zers for immediate gains right now. Wait till the Gen Zers realize that. They're going to make Omarova looks like an angel, a capitalist angel. These Gen Zers, they'll be chopping heads in Times Square. That's what's going to happen in this country because we have a rigged economic system that doesn't work anymore, that is not capitalism, that is not the American dream, and this extremist form of economics will breed extremism in another form as a response. So here's the final take, folks. If Omarova gets confirmed that she makes it and she starts cracking down against banks, and we see bank stocks crashing, the stock market crashing, you know what? Not my preference, not what I wanted, not my choice. Omarova is not my choice, but I say, you know what? Pass the popcorn. Speaking of passing, we're going to pass on the earnings segment, and the reason is we're running out of time. For you new subscribers, this is my part-time job, and sometimes when I'm busy and I finish my real job late, I have a limited time to produce these videos. I try to get them out for you as early as I can. But rest assured, we're going to cover all of these earnings in the next video. But for now, we're moving on to the market's coverage, starting with the market performance today, and here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the red down by 60.10 points or a decline of 0.17%. The Nasdaq, aka Amazon and Apple by the way, closing in the green by 72.14 points or a gain of 0.45%. The S&P 500 also closing in the green by 15.87 points, or a gain of 0.34%. What about the sector's performance today, leading the pack and capturing the gold, the silver, and the bronze technology, aka Apple and Amazon once again. Sprinkle a little NVIDIA on top of that. NVIDIA, of course, popping higher. We'll talk about that in the heat map analysis. But leading the decliners today... No surprise, financials, materials, and utilities. What about the advanced decline ratios? We already covered that, but here it is again. NYSE, 32% advancing versus 65% declining. The NASDAQ, 26% advancing versus 71% declining. What a great market rally we had today, right? Moving on to futures. What's going on here? Crude oil prices rebounding higher again. The WTI and Brent gaining about 1% apiece. Natural gas also climbing higher, almost 2% today. And I told you, every single dip in oil and gas will be bought. It's not about supply and demand. It's not about OPEC. It's not about Biden. 
it is all about the rampant speculation in the market. And the reason is we have inflation. We have loose money all over the place. One of the best hedges against inflation is commodities, including oil, by the way. And therefore, every dip will be bought. So long as the Fed continues the easy money policy, so long as we have inflation, oil prices will continue to climb higher, regardless of the supply and demand dynamic. Matter of fact, China today released some oil from the Strategic Reserve, and perhaps this will be the next step for the U.S. And guess what? Oil prices will go down, and the dip will be bought, and oil prices will climb higher again, because commodities remain the only and true proven hedge against inflation. What about softs? Take a look at lumber. Exploding higher again, gaining about 13.5% today alone. Likewise, coca futures also climbing higher by about half a percentage point or so. But we have red activities here, losses led by OJ, coffee, cotton, and sugar. Watch out for coffee futures, by the way, because there is a lag. Coffee futures exploded higher in the last few months. And you and I as a consumer might say, you know what? I'm not seeing a price change here in uh, coffee. My cup of coffee costs the same. Wait for it. There is a lagging reaction because the coffee you're consuming right now was bought a few months ago. But the coffee being bought right now at higher prices, those prices will be passed down to you. Matter of fact, the headline reads, the price of your morning cup of coffee could be increasing substantially in the months to come. And the reason is coffee futures surging higher. Here is a monthly chart for coffee futures. And as you can see, coffee prices trade in cycles. There was a massive pop, a massive decline, and right now we are just starting the upside cycle. You combine that with inflation in the economy and perhaps Perhaps this pop will be the biggest pop in history for coffee futures. So again, prepare to pay more for coffee. What about metals? We have declines across the board, and it seems that we have a, a polar market here between copper and gold. When gold trades higher, copper declines. When copper trades higher, gold declines. Even though the dollar was down today, gold was down, silver down, platinum down, palladium down big, but copper futures rebounding slightly higher, gaining about 1% or so. Moving on to meats, what's going on here? Live cattle futures gaining a little bit. So did feeder cattle futures gaining about 1.5% today, while lean hogs futures declining. Now, once again, prepare to pay more for what? For beef, burgers, steaks, gonna cost you more. And here's the reason. Drug and feed ingredient shortages hit U.S. livestock producers. So again, we have a shortage in cattle. On top of that, we have diseases, and we have shortages for drugs and feed for these cows. Look at these cows, by the way. They're like, screw you people, you disgust me. Not only you want to butcher me, but now you want to control my farts? How about you just switch to Beyond Meat and leave us the f*** alone? Anyways, what about grains? Grains? Mixed picture here. We have some gains and some losses. The gains, notably from oats, rough rice, and canola. And watch out for oats prices, by the way. I mean, you want to talk to the moon. Do yourself a favor and pull a chart of oats futures. They're exploding higher. Second to call, this is the top performing commodity this year. Unbelievable. But we also have declines here, modest ones for soybeans, soybean meal, soybean oil, corn, and wheat futures. Moving on to the big casino, the options market. What's going on here? Leading the pack, the hottest table by far. The volume is exploding higher today. Thank you to the fake news piece from Bloomberg. We knew about the iCar last year. But anyhow, Apple at number one with over three and a half million contracts. But 81% of those were calls. Are you really surprised that Apple popped higher today? Are any of these call options buyers interested in buying the stock? Maybe about five. 8%, but the rest are just popping the stock higher. And for all you know, these are actually computers, algos, buying these options. And here it is at number two, NVIDIA, popping higher today, and so did options. About 850,000 contracts exchanged hands today. About 68.5% of those were calls. And number three, Tesla, the souffle, with about 800,000 contracts. About 55% of those were calls. Notice the decline in volume for Tesla. And that volume is shifting to other tables, namely Apple and Amazon today. Moving on to the unusual activities that took place in the options market today, starting with the ticker. USO, the United States Oil Fund. This is a bet 
against or for oil of course in this case it is against oil because they're buying puts the 48 puts the expiration date december 17th with the expectations that the uso could drop down by more than 13 and a half percent by then they paid about 25 cents apiece to enter this trade all in all spending about half a million dollars what about the ticker ech this is i believe the chilean etf chile yep it is chile they're buying calls for Chile, the 30 bucks calls for the expiration date January 21st, with the expectations that the name could pop higher by more than 20.5% by then. They paid about 35 cents apiece to enter this trade, all in all, spending about $600,000. What about the trade for the ticker LCID Lucid Motors? They buy calls, they buy puts. This is by far one of the hottest tables in the casino right now. The stock literally moves by double digits every single day, up or down. And if you are at the wrong side of the trade, you're gonna get smoked. So be careful with this one. But in this case, for this trade, they're buying calls. The 51 calls for the expiration date, December 26, with the expectations that the name could pop higher by more than 8% or so by then. They paid about 2 bucks and 32 cents apiece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $3 million. What about the trade for the ticker GPN? This is for global payments. Awful performer, losing about 40% of its value year to date. By the way, you want to avoid these kind of names. Peloton, Activision, Zillow, all of these names that are down big. And the reason is, for taxation purposes, you're going to see a lot of holders dumping these shares before the end of the year for taxation planning. You got to book some losses to reduce your tax bill. Anyhow, somebody did not get the memo. Perhaps they know something that you and I don't know. And they're buying calls here, the 150 calls for the expiration date, January 21st, with the expectations that the name could pop higher by more than 8 18% or so by then. They paid about one buck and 65 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $1.7 million. What about the trade for the ticker ARKKKKKK for Tesla Witch? Kathy Wood. You know Michael Burry, the big short, he's having cold feet. He's kind of a weak player these days. Paper hands. Not the guy you're listening to right now. And by the way, I shorted RKK right at the top. Almost. So I'm still holding here. And somebody's buying more puts. They're buying the 107 puts for the expiration date, December 3rd. With expectations that the name could drop down by more than 6% or so by then. They paid all about 1 buck and 30 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $1.3 million. What about the trade for the ticker H-E-A-R here? This is for Turtle Beach something. It hasn't been performing as of late, but somebody's buying calls, big ones. The 31 calls for the expiration date, January 21st, with expectations that the name could pop higher by more than 12.5% by then. They paid about one buck and 50 cents apiece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $1.5 million. Lastly, what about the trade for the ticker HTZ for Hertz, the scumbags? They're buying more puts now, betting for more declines to come, specifically the 20 puts for the expiration date, December 17th. With the expectations that the name could drop down by more than 7% by then, they paid about one buck and 75 cents apiece to enter this trade, all in all, spending about one and a half million dollars. Moving on to the heat map analysis, what's going on here? The market is awful. We're seeing massive declines here. Names like Cisco Down, Zoom, Ruko, ATVI, Activision Bl Blizzard, aka the Frat House, Twilio, Neo, 3M. A lot of names down big, and the reason is we have some taxation planning here. Sell you losers and fund you winners. But the market should have been down big today. But of course, the market was rescued by market manipulation via options, popping Apple higher, but most importantly Amazon, gaining 4%. That will be enough to hold the SPY and the Qs in the green. We also have gains for Home Depot. A lot of people shorted the name ahead of time, and they're short covering right now because the results were better than expected. And this is a story, by the way, the rampant speculation in the market is firing back. And we're seeing these massive moves, up and down, by the way. For example, you have NVIDIA, at the highs of the day, was trading 10% in the green. Macy's exploding higher today. So did Avis, after earnings. Why is that? The reason is, we have geniuses who short these names ahead of earnings, assuming, oh, NVIDIA went higher, it ran a lot higher before earnings, so the name will crash after earnings. They buy puts, they short the name. What do you know? The report comes out better than expected, 
and now all of these shorts have to cover and therefore you see these massive pops higher. I warned by the way, do not short Macy's prior to earnings. You're gonna get smacked in the mouth and this is exactly what happened today. The problem is with the chips in particular, we might have a red day tomorrow. And the reason is AMAT reported earnings after the bill and not so hot so. Matter of fact, the name is down about 5% after hours. This will have a negative impact on chips, the SMH, and perhaps the Qs. We also have Moderna bucking the trend. And Moderna, of course, is awaiting approval from the FDA for their booster shots. And therefore, we're seeing a lot of short covering in that name. Likewise, we have gains for CVS. CVS is closing about 900 stores to concentrate on their online operation, and therefore the name is popping higher. Moving on to charts, what's going on here for the 30 minutes chart for the SPY? We had the head and shoulder formation, the bear flag, which produced a flush down in the morning, and immediately the plunge protection team, the entity manipulating the market via options, performed the rescue, and now the chart is showing a bull flag formation. So let's see if the SPY has the energy enough to pop higher and recapture the trend line once again. What about the daily chart for the continuous contract in the SPY? We still have the double top scenario going on, but we have till tomorrow, of course, for the chart to make a correction and close at all time highs. And if it does, then the double top formation goes out of the window. The number is 4,711 and 75. We're getting very close here. It could happen. And if it happens tomorrow and the market closes, that's the key, closes above that number and we make a higher high, then the double top scenario goes out of the window. On the other hand, we have highly extended momentum indicators. These are not sell signals, of course, but they are an indicator that the market is running out of gas, it is already topping out in momentum. And therefore, you're seeing this bad breadth with the NYSE and the NASDAQ with only 20 something percent advancing. But the magic of the ETFization of the market, you can pump one name or two names. If you pump them enough, the index shoot up higher. Moving on to the Qs, the NASDAQ 30 minutes chart. What's going on here? We had a false bear flag signal last night and the chart never broke in the 397 support. Matter of fact, it gapped higher in the morning, but it went down. It was a gap and crap, a many small one. Where did the rebound happen, by the way? Exactly at the trend line. The NASDAQ closed the gap, went down to the trend line, rebounded higher, and now it is trading pretty much at all time highs. For now, if there is an entity, whether it is Powell and his allies pumping the market higher, or whoever, doesn't matter. We don't want to fight them right here. Let them do their thing. Perhaps they have a time limit till the end of the week. Powell gets re-nominated and then the stock market pulls down. Now for bears who are waiting to short this chart, you want to wait for two things. Number one, breaching the trend line. Number two, breaching the support of 397. And then you have two confirmations that at least the Qs will go down all the way to the support zone. Moving on to the daily chart for the continuous contract in the NASDAQ, we had some bearish signals here with the shooting star, with the elevated momentum indicators, with the potential of a reverse ABC pattern. Now that's out of the window, completely gone, because the Qs made all-time highs again in the backs of Amazon and Apple. It doesn't matter if the market is collapsing. It matters if these big cap technology names hold. And this is exactly, by the way, what we talked about a few videos ago, the Grantham theory, that the market crashes in increments, meaning at first they shoot the highest momentum indicators, the mania names, they get shot, and then the medium cap mania stocks, they get shot. And lastly, they start shooting the big caps, the mega caps, the Apples, the Microsofts, the Facebooks, the Teslas. Those are going to be the last ones to fall. And therefore, the index could perform. But you could see certain stocks losing 20, 30, even 50%. And we're not talking about small stocks. We're talking about large stocks. Yet the SPY and the Qs continue to go higher and higher, making all-time highs after all-time highs. And look at the volume, by the way. The volume went a lot higher today on the buying side. And therefore, the expectations for now, that this momentum, this volume will continue all the way at least to tomorrow until and unless we get a solid reversal signal, not just on the charts, by the way, but it should also be confirmed by an underperformance and weakness in all mega cap stocks. Moving on to the IWM, the Russell 2000, and this is a 30 minutes chart. Yesterday, we talked about the bear flag and it should take us down all the way to 233. This is exactly what happened and the IWM pretty much rebounded exactly to the penny, almost at 233. And it's now doing the double bottom thingy. 
So let's see if the Russell 2000 has the energy to pop all the way to 237.5 by the end of the week, meaning tomorrow. And it better do that because when we switch to a weekly chart for the RUT, the Russell 2000, the big one, was the pop out of the consolidation range a bull trap, a fake, a phony pop? Well, for now it is not because the chart is holding 2360 but a close a weekly close below that number and then we'll know for sure that this was a mere bull trap a fake pop and some people bought it perhaps it was done via options perhaps it was done via certain stocks but you're seeing the reopening stocks underperforming now the travel stocks are underperforming the meme stocks also underperforming and therefore i'm not sure how the iwm and the russell 2000 is going to climb higher again without the participation of these names moving on to the dollar tricky dixie what's going on here we have a confirmation of the weakness and the reversal for the dollar we have a top at 96 and now we have the confirmation it should take us down at least a minimum of 95. now you should always be aware that tricky dixie is famous for playing possum it plays dead for a little while and then pops higher right away but looking at the charts the risk versus reward says you want to go along the euro right now the euro is bottoming it looks like and if the euro pops higher then the dollar will continue to slide down and this will be good for certain commodities and their relative stocks moving on to gold what's going on here not popping higher even though the dollar was down and the 10-year yield was down yet gold is not performing and this is a little tricky because i usually confirm the weakness in the dollar by the action in gold meaning if the weakness in the dollar is for real then gold should be popping higher likewise for the second enemy if the weakness in the 10-year yield is for real then gold should be popping higher the fact that gold is not popping higher tells me that gold is suspicious here gold is saying one of my two enemies the dollar or the 10-year yield is faking it and they're about to pop higher again which one is it will it be the dollar or will it be the 10-year yield yet from a candlestick pattern it is too early to call the pop in gold over because for all you know this is a bull flag consolidation and gold is building the energy to make another leg higher so you have to keep that in mind the technical patterns are still positive for gold but the dynamic and the relationship between gold and the dixie and the 10-year yield is not working as it's supposed to otherwise gold should have popped higher today and here is the chart for the 10-year yield what's going on here you have yet another consolidation day after a reversal candle the reversal will not be confirmed unless we have a weekly closing above 155 but preferably under one and a half percent if that happens then the pop in the 10-year treasury was transitory but by all accounts it is not and perhaps this is what gold is seeing perhaps gold is seeing watch out here the 10-year yield is about to pop higher again we'll see and of course they don't make it easy for us pretty much every single week by the end of the week we have the battle between yields and the tlt all very close the most important levels in this case 149 for the tlt the weekly candle is getting a lot better here and a weekly closing above 149 will reignite the debate that perhaps the tlt is about to pop higher and yields are about to reverse down and to make it even more confusing look at the chart of the 10-year yield and the tlt both have positive divergence for now on the momentum indicators which is weird it doesn't happen all the time usually they trade as inverse of one another but i'm still in team yields still believe that yields are going to pop higher and not the TLT. We'll see. What about the VIX 4 hours chart? What's going on here? The VIX, from a MACD perspective, in the 4 hours, is now trading in positive territory. If anything, this is an indicator that the VIX should shoot up higher and attempt to close the week above 20. And that should reflect in the SPY trading down. But we are in the bizarro land market right now. And you could see the SPY rallying along with the VIX, which is absurd. But the reason is the VIX is popping higher. The SPY is being artificially supported via one or two names, popping higher via options. This indicator, the four hours MACD on the VIX, has been accurate going all the way at least to june of this year every time we have a pop we have a crossing in the macd in positive territory creating green impressions in the histogram every single time that produced a double digit pop in the vix and a pull back in the spy so trusting this indicator it means the vix is about to pop higher and the spy should dive down the problem is once again the bizarro land market the divergence is all over the place and the reason behind that the market is being mechanically manipulated moving on to apple what's going on here a daily chart we already talked about the recycled icar optimism and now the chart is popping higher on higher volume by the way and the expectations are now that the stock is trading almost all-time highs 
why not go all the way to the top end of the channel and that will be about two percent gains from where the chart is trading right now and that could happen as soon as tomorrow by the way all you need to do is some buying of the 160 165 calls and apple will pop higher moving on to a daily chart for tesla what's going on here no significant update because the candle for trading today was within the range of yesterday's candle the bulls are still eyeing the top of the reversal candle can you beat that number can you close the day above that number it will take a lot it will take a lot of options activities of course and a lot of buying for now we have a lot of theories that this is a double bottom we will see a pop in tesla i'll believe it when i see it and that will happen after closing above the top of the reversal candle the bears are looking for something else the bears are saying you know what it's running out of gas and the activities are now shifting to other names and elon musk is not finished dumping and therefore we're gonna see another leg down and i say for tesla bears you gotta wait till 1000 if that level is breached and the stock closes the day below 1000 then you have the confirmation the stock will go down at least to 900 if not all the way to the trend line but you gotta wait till 1000 is breached and the stock closes the day most importantly below 1000 once again it's a psychological number that's the importance of 1000 tulips what's going on here btc you gotta wait because the momentum is now in the downside you gotta wait for the support zone and it is between 53,200 and 55,300 let's see how it performs once it reaches that level if we have a strong bounce and perhaps combined by oversold conditions in the rsi then we might have a bottom but buying the dip right now is suicidal you gotta wait till the support zone moving on to amc what's going on here amc not doing so hot so we explained the head and shoulder formation last night and amc indeed took a leg down not all the way to the support of 39 but close enough so what do you do with this chart right now the answer is there is nothing you can do you can only assume that what happened today will be continued tomorrow and the destination is 39 the flip side is what if amc pops higher again and then the target becomes 42 and a half you gotta wait for a breakage of one of these numbers 42 and a half you buy calls with the target of the same gap that amc failed to close which is 44 and a half almost the other number you have to look at is 39 that number is broken the support that you buy puts and you're eyeing 36 and a half the next support anyhow moving on to the conclusion of this video what do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow nothing there was nothing going on we have some uh, fed zombies speaking who cares what do we have on the earnings calendar nothing important but we had some important names today alibaba amat a work day i assure you we're going to cover all of them in the next video whether that comes out tomorrow or sunday we can cover all of them in details anyhow folks we're done here at least i'm done i don't know about you you can do whatever you want doesn't matter to me but i'm done here thank you for watching thank you for listening this is all i got for you for now but i will talk to you again soon if you found the information presented in this video helpful please subscribe press the like button the notification button and follow me on social media